A differential backup is a type of backup that contains only data that has been changed since the last backup. This means that the differential backup is much smaller in size than the full backup, and it can be completed more quickly. In order to restore a database from a differential backup, you must have the latest full backup, as well as any subsequent differential backups. This is because differential backup only contains the changes made by the database since the last full backup and does not contain all the data in the database. So in other words, in order to create a differential backup, you must have at least one full backup. So in this diagram, we have two full backups and three differential backups. Each ID represents data. Differential backup on Tuesday only contained ID 2 which is the data which had changed since the last backup and Wednesday contained ID 2 and 3. This is additional data change since the last backup. The second full backup on Thursday contains ID 1, 2 and 3. So the differential backup executed on Friday only contained ID 4 because the differential backup only contained changes since the last full backup. A differential backup has a couple of benefits when compared to a full backup. The first one is speed. Creating a differential backup can be very fast when compared to creating a full backup because the differential backup captures only data changes since the last backup. One thing to keep in mind with differential backups is that when restoring a differential backup, it requires more time than restoring a full backup because you need to restore from at least two backup files. So you'd have to restore your full backup and then you do a restore of your differential backup. As the differential backup increases in size, restoring a differential backup will significantly increase the time required to restore a database. So it's ideal that you take a full backup at set intervals to establish a new differential baseline for the data. In order to create a differential backup, you can use T-SQL or Management Studio. So let's take a look at an example of how you can perform a differential backup. So guys, as previously mentioned, there are two ways that you can take a differential backup. You can use T-SQL scripts as well as you can use the graphical user interface, right? So when you're using the T-SQL script, it is really simple. First, you specify the backup database command, the database which you want to backup, then you say to disk, and then you specify the location. Then you use a with clause and then you say differential, right? and then you can also specify a name for the backup, right? This is just like metadata for the database backup. This will be the actual name of the file, and this is the location on my computer where it will be stored. Now, one thing I just want to highlight for beginners, when you have just one set of script and you want to execute everything, you don't have to highlight it. You could just select execute here, and in the message section, you can see a summary of what was done, right? The number of page process and the type of database backup which was complete. So if you don't know what pages are, guys, pages are what the data is stored in in SQL Server, right? So data is stored in pages, right? So that's what this represents. So there were, so there were 721 pages in the data file and there was one page in the transaction log file. So now let's take a look at how you can achieve the same thing using the graphical user interface. In fact, this is the same script that the graphical user interface will generate. So right click on the database that you want to backup, select task, scroll down to backup, then for the backup type, select differential. So you have an existing file, so I want to remove that and add a new one so it doesn't overwrite any database file which is on the database. So I'm going to call it Adventure Works Differential 2023 August. So it's a good idea to append the date when you took the backup on your database file so you know when you took that backup, right? So here I'm just going to select OK. Now I want to show you something. Select Backup Options and for Set Backup Compression, select the drop down and select Compress Backup. I want you to see the difference when the database is compressed versus when it is not compressed. It allows you to save a lot of this space. So here I'm just going to select OK. But before I select OK, I'm just going to select script to new window and select OK. So the backup was completed. So basically, if you observe the script, it is pretty much similar to the one we used. So by default, 
compression does not enable on the server so if you right click on your server select properties select database settings and for backup compression if you select yes you won't have to select that option when you're manually taking a backup so it will automatically use the server default right so let's select ok and let me show you where that will come in again because if you're new you may not catch on on this real quick so let's go back so i'm going to select a database select task select backup now let's go to backup options and here it says use the default server settings so that means it will be automatically compressed whenever i enable it at the instance level right so i'm going to cancel this now let's go to our backup directory and take a look at the database files so this is my compressed backup and this is the one that is not compressed so you can see this one is 28 megabytes and this is just 1.2 megabytes so that's how effective the compression is and guys i appreciate those of you who have reached out to me and let me know that this portion of the lecture was blank little minor issues do occur when you're processing videos so i appreciate it so again guys i appreciate those of you who have reached out to me and let me know that this portion of the lecture was blank in the next lecture we're going to be taking a look at transaction log backups